after you've gotten the delay right with the phase zeroed out and everything looks good from a time alignment standpoint, if you still have some obvious phase issues and some obvious frequency response issues, because remember, you're not going to hear these phase anomalies. You're going to hear amplitude anomalies. So if the frequency response already looks really good at that integration point, you may not want to touch this. But let's just say for the sake of argument, you've gotten the time alignment, which is the delay, set right, and everything integrates really well in that area. And the phase looks pretty good, but it's a little bit off because that happens sometimes. You could play around with the phase control a little bit and see what that does. But my guess is that as you play with it, you're going to find that the time alignment is no longer correct. And so probably that's not going to be the best route. In fact, typically what we do when we have access to really sophisticated DSP tools is we adjust the delay until the whole thing is as aligned as it can be. And then what we do to get that little phase problem fixed is we actually add all pass filters and use that to adjust it because the all pass filter will affect the phase, but it will not affect the time delay and it will not affect the frequency response at all. But because it, here's where it does affect the frequency response, because the phase alignment can cause some cancellation or reinforcements that we don't want. Um, sometimes you do, usually if, if you need to do this, you will actually get a better frequency response by doing that. So my focus actually would be on delay. That is what you should be focused on, not phase, because the two are tied together. And you don't want to necessarily be adjusting the phase without the delay, because you need the system to be timeline.